Right Network. Mobilizing, countering the left, energizing the right. New Right Network, home of the New Right Movement. everyone, welcome to New Right Network's original series, Smith TV. Your host, Brian Smith, giving you all the breaking news of the day, wrapping it all up, making sense of it, exposing the fake news, the fake news media, the Democrat propaganda, and giving you the real news every single night, Monday through Friday, 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern. And right after this show is the Wayne Dupree Show, so you've got two hours of back-to-back, non-stop news and information, real news real information and exposing all the fake news so that you know what's really going on and uh if this first time been on show welcome 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 uh down in the description below there's a couple of links for you uh, there's an iheart radio link if you want to listen to show audio only uh the telegram link will keep you in touch with me as we go forward so you don't have to worry about a shadow banning jump on in you'll receive the show uh, notes and the show link when it goes live so you'll never miss a show and then we're also down there parlor.com over at the new social media outlet check that out as well and right underneath that there's a, a description that says full show notes that link will take you over to newrightnetwork.com there's usually about two to three pages of show notes it's a lot of stuff guys and today we've got almost three full pages so i'm really gonna have to hurry up and get through this but uh, take that link, jump over to New Right Network, check out the show notes. Um, at the top of the show notes, there's an embed of the video of the show. So you can share this link with your friends and your family, and they'll have the video and the notes all in one spot. And for those of you that are over on Patreon, we thank you very, very much for helping the show, helping to continue to, to do the show every single day, moving forward, getting out the real information, America First Agenda. And uh, and if you like what you hear, jump over there, smith.tv, uh, crush the Patreon, crush the PayPal button or the cash me. For those of you that are Patreons, you get the show and the show notes. You get it all early. Uh, you can watch a show early. You get all the notes. You know what everything that's going on before the show even goes live. So that's a little perk about being a Patreon as well as being able to be in contact with me and other Patreons 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we talk about politics and life and just everything under the sun. So it, uh, it's good to be a Patreon hanging out with good like-minded friends and as we get the show started again, I got a lot of show notes. We're going to have to run through this pretty quick. If you got ADD, hold on. Don't take your medication yet. We're about ready to get started. <laughs> uh, we got Trump news. We're going to talk about some awesome things that Trump is doing in the news today. Uh, racism and immigration. Uh, big, big gaslighting operation with the Democrat Party. Elan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, and AOC have just now added a fourth uh, race baiter, if you will, uh, Presley. Uh, we'll get into what's going on with Ayana Presley out of uh, Massachusetts. Uh, the Four Horsemen now. And somebody put that up on Twitter, Four Horsemen, if you're not uh, looking at gender. And I'm like, man, gender's fluid nowadays. You can be whatever you want. <laughs> so <laughs> referring to him as the, the squad being referred to as the Four Horsemen, uh, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, AOC, and now the new Ayana Presley that I am now referring to as the new face of Antifa. This is Antifa, and I'll show you exactly why. I'll back up why I say it, and and you'll see exactly what's going on. And I know that doesn't sound like good news, but blatant lies. Down at the bottom of the show note, blatant lies. I'm going to show you exactly the blatant lies. You're going to see them clear as day. we got our good friend Brandon Strzok that's uh, doing a new series called Hard Truth Episode 1. I'm going to play a little bit of that for you, and, and we'll get into some of the lies, the back and forth, and the hypocrisy so that you can show your friends and your family exactly where Donald Trump is right and exactly where the Democrats are wrong. So as we jump into the news of the day, breaking news, well, sort of, <laughs> uh, we reported on this last week, but we've got some new updates on this, this at Life News HQ. If you're pro-life, you're pro pro uh, America, America first agenda. This is absolutely one to follow. 
Breaking news, President Trump implements new rules to defund Planned Parenthood abortion business. The rules prohibit entities from receiving Title X funding if they run an abortion business at the same facility as their Title X funded family planning organization is. And Planned Parenthood refuses to separate the two. Something else that's breaking about this is that the, it's already been ruled that Donald Trump can Im- implement this immediately. And he is implementing this immediately. So when when the uh, last week's article or last week's uh, headlines talked about that Donald Trump could uh, defund some of Planned Parenthood, well, if Planned Parenthood does not separate those two practices, uh, then they receive zero monies. So as it's looking right now, $60 million possibly taken from Planned Parenthood, thoroughly excited about this, exposing the Democrats, exposing this evilness that is the uh, abortion mills, uh, selling baby parts and bodies, and it's just absolutely evil. I mean, the party of evil, the Democrat Party, uh, the Harvey Weinsteins, the Epsteins, the the Hollywood, West Hollywood. Uh, something else I was talking with the, the writers from New Right Network. We had our meeting this morning. And uh, the blackouts that were happening in D.C. and L.A., uh, New York City, and around uh, West Hollywood, um, they're saying that some, there's a lot of stuff that's coming out, so we'll report on it when it comes out. But the, they're talking about right now that, that uh, Donald Trump's administration is moving in on the evils that is all this stuff that's out there. Uh, some people are saying that the blackouts were to get into uh, uh, the Clinton Foundation and get the information they need. Guys, if this is true, somebody's going to jail. I mean, somebody big's going to jail. And again, I'll reiterate, if if, um, Epstein gets five years for a plea deal and other heads roll all the way up to the top, whether it be the Clintons uh, or whoever, heads roll, I'm good with that. Let him have five years for rolling over on the rest of them. And again, Epstein did have secret videos of all of these uh, high flyers. And some other folks are saying that the, uh, the Playboy Mansion, with uh, underground tunnels and and all kinds of things going on there with uh, you know highfalutin uh, people, I, I'm not saying that there was pedophilia going on, but uh, definitely some things are developing with that as well. So as that more comes to light, we'll bring it to you. But yeah, the blackouts that are going on that you might not be hearing about because of. And this is why I think the liberals and the Democrats are going all crazy, all nuts on this racist, homophobe, sexist, bigoted, uh, just all out on Donald Trump because he is truly removing all their power that they have, uh, you know, when it comes to all the evils of the world, like the Planned Parenthood. I mean, think about that. If you're dependent to the tune of $60 million or whatever the, the money is that Planned Parenthood shifts over to you as a candidate, if that money is ripped out of your, you know, your hand, your wallet. Yeah. You're going to be pretty upset. You're going to be pretty PO'd and the Democrats are absolutely lit up and whoever the powers that be are using the four horsemen or the squad as they call themselves. It's kind of, kind of weird. Got to go back to the uh, drawing board, come up with a better title for your, your group squad. Uh, And they're all flipping out over Donald Trump saying what? As Trump tweets out at real Donald Trump, our country is free, beautiful, and successful. If you hate our country or if you are not happy here, you can leave. And our good friend at LRI Hendry, Laura Hendry, this is a great patriot to follow. Exactly. People are breaking the law to get into our country because there is no place on earth like America. If you don't like it, you can leave. And our good friend at Black Widow 1928 at Real Donald Trump. If you're not happy here, you can leave as far as I'm concerned if you hate our country. And she tweeted out the video of Trump. Uh, If you're not happy here, then you can leave. As far as I'm concerned, if you hate our country, if you're not happy here, you can leave. And that's what I say all the time. That's what I said in a tweet, which I guess some people think is controversial. A lot of people love it, by the way. A lot of people love it. But if you're not happy in the U.S., if you're complaining all the time, very simply, you can leave. You can leave right now. Come back if you want. Don't come back. It's okay, too. (laughs) 
But if you're not happy, you can leave. President Trump. So the uh, the reporter started yelling back at him and started going. There was a female reporter kept yelling at him. Uh, he didn't respond to her, responded to another gentleman. But elaborate on it. Yeah, guys, if you don't like being here, go home. No, just go away. There's nothing racist about that. There's nothing sexist about that. There's no, no homophobe. No, no, there ain't no, not, no Islamophobia. There's nothing in that other than, bye, Felicia. <laughs> I'm serious. Bye, Felicia. Don't come around here no more. Uh, but we know what this is all about. This is all about gaslighting their people. Uh, they've got to tag Donald Trump with racist, sexist, bigot, homophobe. They absolutely have to because their ideas are failing. Their ideas, socialism, communism, America people, everybody in America, middle America, just the average America person does not want what they're selling does not want what they're selling and can see through the lies. Uh, social media has made it extremely difficult for the Democrats to uh, to sell their lies, for the Democrats to continue to fundraise off of lying. Uh, our good friend, again, I'll play the video here at the end of the show, our good friend Brandon, uh, hashtag walkaway movement. He, he, he told me personally, he said, I... I um, I was talking with a friend of mine and uh, I was telling him, how could you support Donald Trump? He's such a, such a racist. He's so hateful. Remember he did that, that, that thing, making fun of a disease a reporter had. And his friend sent him a video exposing that as fake news. And that Donald Trump does that all the time. And that, that reporter did not even have the, the, the shaking or the, this, whatever that is, the Michael J. Fox thing, he didn't have that. And so Brandon started to do his own homework on social media, folks, going down the rabbit hole, finding the truth, and just having an absolute paradigm shift. He voted for Hillary Clinton, guys. Brandon has never voted for Donald Trump. He's voting 2020 Trump all in. Guys, we've got an opportunity to really make this country great again. Donald Trump hijacking the GOP. Now our opportunity to go ahead and uh, cement that deal forever. Lock it up with folks like you and me uh, here, right here, Smith TV, getting out the real news, talking about real candidates running. It has been, it's never been easier to run as a candidate now than ever before in all of human history, folks. We're at, we can get a hold of each other at, at an instant. I've got, got people all over, tens of thousands of people all over Twitter that, that are friends with us, that uh, message us, that help us with the show and everything like that. So absolutely uh, staying plugged in. And uh, before I forget, speaking about our friends and speaking about the candidates, in the show notes, I, I forgot to tell you, in the show notes is all the links to all the great patriots and all the articles we're going to be talking about today today. Crush the links, crush the names, like for Black Widow, 1928, go in the, uh, the show notes and click on her name. That'll take you right over to Twitter so you can follow her. And a lot of these great patriots will follow you back to help build up your following on Twitter and stay plugged into real news instantly right here. And the nonstop attacking of President Trump by the left continues today. They are ratcheting it up they, I mean, they're going all out. It's beyond anything we have ever seen. So Donald Trump hitting back at real Donald Trump. If you come after the president, the country, the flag, he's going to defend himself. What the squad doesn't like is that Donald Trump is enforcing the very laws that are on the books that were put there by Congress. This by Jason Chaffetz, also by Jason Chaffetz, great new book. Power grab and replying to Donald Trump, our good friend at chat by CC, President Trump has every right to defend himself and our country. I, for one, will stand shoulder to shoulder with him to defend America as well, especially from radical racists who hate our country. That's not conjecture, folks. When we get into the show, there's some stuff I'm going to show you and you're going to be floored if you haven't seen it yet. The absolute blatant racism coming from the Democrat Party. Yes, it is blatant. It is obvious. If you're a, a, a minority, someone of color, and you hear them speak, and you support Donald Trump, you are going to absolutely roll over and say, this is unbelievable. 
the racism from the left has reached an all new high. And here at Smith TV, we are here to absolutely defend the country, defend the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, your right to be able to do whatever it is that you want, support our military, uh, support our law enforcement, absolutely 100%. And Donald Trump is in that camp. So we're absolutely supporting our president. And Donald Trump tweeted out on Friday, Friday's tour showed vividly to politicians and media how well and clean the children's detention centers are. Great reviews. Failing New York Times story was fake. We reported on that before. Uh, it just happened. So happens that our good friend uh, Brian Frazier at B Frazier 747 uh, retweeted to Donald Trump. If you want to come to America, there's a legal way you apply. Respect the laws of the land. You don't have to live your life in fear in at any moment being deported and i for one welcome you when the democrats start encouraging people to come across the border any way they can illegally uh, promising them free shit. number one what do you think is going to happen the country's going to get invaded even worse than it has been and that's wrong there's a legal way to come across just come across legally if you want to come to america or canada because it's a great it's a better place and and i don't blame you nobody blames you just come across legally you know respect the laws of the land and try to assimilate into the country but Here's the situation. When you do come across illegally, you don't show up for court. You, these people live every single day of their lives in fear that they're going to be deported. And they should be deported. And until something is done about it, so that they do start deporting people, then people aren't going aren't gonna to change and they're going to keep doing this sort of stuff, especially when they're being encouraged to do so. So stop doing it. Just respect the laws of the land. And people need to understand, nobody wants to separate families. Nobody wants to take somebody that's coming from a different place uh, that where it's not good there. Just do it in a legal way. You want to come and seek asylum? I, for one, certainly don't blame you. Just do so and start off by showing that you respect the laws of the land. That's all I ask. And, you know, by doing this, by starting to deport people, you know, it sends a clear message, and it's a message that has to be sent. You have to come across legally. You have to go to your court hearings. You have to, you know, do whatever is required by you. And it's really, really not fair to people that are coming across legally, seeking asylum or whatever the case may be, because it's bogging down the system. You know, and these people are getting delayed and being affected in a negative way because of the other people that are coming so illegally. So, you know, tough luck. You don't want to respect the laws of the land, then you got to go. It's as simple as that. So if you don't want to live your life in fear, you don't want to worry about being, uh, you know, deported. You don't want to worry about putting your family in jeopardy. Just do it legally. It's that simple. Fantastic, Brian. I couldn't agree with you more. Absolutely. These Democrats are putting uh, uh, fear into illegal immigrants, uh, promising them false hopes. And when they arrive here, uh, they're illegal. They're in the shadows. You got all kinds of criminality, uh, uh, gangbangers. And you know what? Think about that. If you're from another country and you're pretty well off or you're middle class or you're doing just fine, you're not going to leave your country to come to America. It's just not going to happen. So as Donald Trump once said, they're not sending their best, which 100%, that's common sense. And Brian right here speaking common sense. Uh, the problem is, is that we're dealing with a Democrat party that has no sense, no common sense whatsoever. Uh, they're getting paid on the back end and they're getting paid to to put out the propaganda, put out the lies. You can see them, AOC, Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, and you can watch them in Congress reading off scripts. They're scripted because when they get off script, it is hysterical how they're just put in their place. And as the Democrats make promises they cannot keep, this at jelly underscore cat, C-A-T, a great patriot to follow. 
according to the Democrats, agenda for American tax dollars. We should be happy to use our tax dollars to pay for all elective transgendered surgeries, but be outraged at hashtag boycott Fourth of July DC if our tax dollars are used to celebrate our country. No. Plan for、uh, Medicare for all include gender confirmation or reassignment surgeries. Absolutely, we have to respect everyone's medical needs. And if someone needs a surgery to be full and to live their life fully, the idea is a healthcare system that actually serves everyone to the fullest, not a healthcare system that rations and causes people to struggle to get just a little healthcare. I mean, that's the point we need to get deep. All right. This is California has gone way too far with Gavin Newsom.、Uh, healthcare, one hundred percent for all illegals, and now we got Bill De Blasio right here, full blown communist guys. This this guy right here, full blown communist right here,、uh, as well as Gavin Newsom as well. I don't don't think that they're different by any means.、Uh, and I'm gonna say that Gavin Newsom. Uh, absolutely destroying California with、uh, healthcare for illegals, all down 100% covered. And now we've got、uh, New York City Mayor Bill De Blasio on camera saying, "Yes, if you、uh, need to be made whole, you need transgendered surgery. Come to New York City; that will be covered completely free." What should be done uh, is uh, get them some mental help. If you are uncomfortable or something is、uh, wrong and and you just don't feel right in your body, you need to get some kind of counseling. Seriously,、uh, you talk about mental disorders. This is a mental disorder.、Uh, looking at、uh, people that are transitioning into a different gender,、uh, the, the the rate of suicide is through the roof in these communities,、uh, the gay and lesbian communities. The the, the The、uh, drug abuse, the alcohol abuse. I'm not saying all of them, but I'm saying for the, a lot of them, higher than normal.、Uh, the the violence in these communities,、uh, in the relationships,、uh, it is just unhealthy. So I would suggest helping them by giving them some kind of,、uh, you know, counseling. Give them some mental health help. That's what you need to do. Not give them a chopped addictomy. Or an addictomy. That, that's real bad. Really, really bad.、Uh, matter of fact, here's how bad it is, guys. I was reading an article because I thought it was fascinating that a Chinese man received,、uh, as a young kid, he、uh, his、um, genitalia was removed in a, in a car accident, and as a grown adult,、uh, he received the first、uh, actual working、uh, transplant or implant of a, a penis. And I, I just it blew my mind. I said, "Well,、uh, there goes Viagra. It's not going to be sold anymore." But I thought it was amazing, and so I was just reading the article. Thought it was fascinating, science stuff like that, and、um, got the updates on him.、Uh, about six, seven months later, he went back to the hospital and he asked them to remove it. And I started thinking about this. I'm like, "That's fascinating. Why would you?" And as a man. Yeah, ah,、uh, I didn't think about that aspect of it. It's it's not yours, and ah,、uh, yeah, no, no. So I'm thinking, put yourself in a in a woman's shoes, and、uh, you don't have to be high heels, just some gym shoes. Put yourself in a woman's shoes, and then、uh, think about the notion of you know your genital, your body. You've seen it all your life. It is yours. Uh, you know, people make names for them and whatnot. I mean, it is yours. You own all of that. And、uh, say you're about twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven as a female, and you go ahead with the procedure to get an adedictomy. Uh, say, say. I mean, I don't know if they can create one, but they they, they get one. It's not yours, and they put it. <sighs> I mean, tell you the psychological aspect of that, the transitioning of that.、Uh, I knew a I knew a girl who got the、um, uh, the uh, stomach surgery where they make your stomach small, they cut it and they stitch it up, make it small. Well, I didn't know about this, but she was telling me about.、It. She said you have to undergo psychological evaluations. You have to pass tests. You have to get through psychological, uh, uh, you know, interviews and things like that, and it's not easy. To actually even be a candidate 
to have your that, that specific surgery. We're talking about stomach surgery from going fat to small. Compare that to getting a penis when you never had one. Ah, oh, I man, they need some mental help for sure. As we're talking about migration, illegal immigration, uh, the Democrats giving out free health care, chopped addictomies, add addictomies, the lunacy of this party is just, phew, it's out the window. Speaking about windows, the Overton window has been pushed probably further than I've ever seen it pushed when it comes to racist, bigot, sexist, homophobe, illegal immigration. And, uh, and it is fully on display, gaslighting an entire nation. I, I can't help but to think that the world is looking at America, shaking its head and say, wow, they're absolutely going through a second civil war. Uh, not, well, I mean, there's violence coming from the left, but there's no, no, uh, you know, battles being fought, but, but definitely a civil war here on social media, in Congress, in the Senate, the president of the United States, absolutely battling against this, uh, this party. And this, our good friend at jelly underscore cat, real Donald Trump in 2008, running for president, talking about his immigration reform. Oh, wait, my bad. Uh, then Barack Obama. This administration, the Bush administration, has done nothing to control the problem that we have. Uh, we've had five million undocumented workers come over the borders uh, since George Bush took office. Uh, it has become an extraordinary problem. And the reason the American people are concerned is because they are seeing their own economic position slip away. And oftentimes, Employers are exploiting these undocumented workers. They're not paying the minimum wage. They're not uh, observing worker safety laws. Uh, and so what we have to do is create a comprehensive solution to the problem. Now, I have already stated that as president, I will make sure that we finally have the kind of border security that we need. That's step number one. Step number two is to take on employers. Right now, they, an employer has more of a chance of getting hit by lightning than be prosecuted for hiring an undocumented worker. That has to change. They have to be held accountable. And when we do those things, when we do those things, I believe that we can take the undocumented workers, the illegal aliens who are here, get them out of the shadows, make sure that they are subject to a stiff penalty, make sure that they're learning English, make sure that they go to the back of the line so they're not getting an advantage over people who came here legally. And when we do that, I think that we can, instead of shedding all And this, this at Echo the Call, Barack Obama says crime and poverty do not justify an asylum claim. Part two, Barack Obama back to back. Folks, this is the gaslighting that happened for eight straight years. Some of the stories were a little overprint. Um, uh, and as I explained to uh, my fellow presidents, uh, under U.S. law, uh, you know, we admit a certain number of refugees from all around the world based on some fairly narrow criteria. Uh, and typically, refugee status is not granted just based on... Uh, if you ever wondered how in the heck Barack Obama got elected president of the United States, it's because of the lies that he told. Guys, he doesn't believe a single word of what he said. He just said what he had to say to get elected. Uh, yes, there were a lot of deportations under Barack Obama. Yes, uh, children were being caged under Barack Obama. But don't, don't think that they didn't want him to come in here. Don't think that they didn't need new voters as they need right now. They're certainly wanting all these people to come to the border because they know that they're going to be able to get them in one way or another. And then also, you know, kill uh, two, two birds with one stone. And then also blame all of this on... President Donald Trump, when the crisis, Barack Obama, the entire eight years of your presidency was a crisis, and this was created by you. And so the Democrats do not want to come to the table and fix the asylum laws. The Democrats don't want to, to, to work with the Republicans whatsoever because it's going to stop the agenda of illegals coming into America, their new voting base. So when we have the hashtag walkaway movement, the Blexit movement, the Jexus movement, it's because 
They've been lied to. Black Americans have been lied to. Jewish Americans have been lied to. All Americans have been lied to. Uh, it's just that if you're over on Trump's party, you can see the lies. If you're still voting Democrat, I'm telling you right now, you're being lied to. You're being gaslit. If you think that Donald Trump is a racist, sex, big homophobe, then you're gaslit into thinking something that is that really isn't. And more gaslighting from Nancy Pelosi, none other. Uh, this our good friend at WATSPN1013, Gene. This is absolutely great patriot to follow. House will condemn Trump's racist, xenophobic tweets. Which ones, Pelosi? Where was race ever mentioned? What about the squad's anti-American, anti-Semitic remarks? Going to have a resolution against them? Omar refuses to condemn Al-Qaeda and Antifa. This at thegatewaypundit.com. Is it because these children don't look like children that are around you? Have you ever held a deceased child in your arms? First of all, your comments are disgusting. I've served my country for 34 years. And yes, I held a five-year-old boy in my arms that, in back of that tractor trailer. I knelt down beside him and said a prayer for him because I knew what his last 30 minutes of his life were like. And I had a five-year-old son at the time. For you to sit there and insult my integrity and my love for my country and for, the, and for children, that's why this whole thing needs to be fixed. So you are the author of the family separation policy. I am not the author of this memo. You're not the author, but you signed the memo. Yes. You recommended family separation. I recommended zero tolerance. Which includes family separation. The same as is when every U.S. citizen parent gets arrested when they're with a child. If I get arrested for DUI and I have a young child in a car, I'm going to be separated. Mr. Father Holman, with family. all due respect, legal asylees are not charged with any crime. When you're in the country illegally, it's violation 8 United States Code 1325. Seeking asylum is legal. If you want to seek asylum, you go through the port of entry, do it the legal way. The Attorney General of the United States has made that clear. Okay. Lives are, are a danger. They need uh, Secret Service protection. They need extra uh, protection because of Donald Trump. It's the violence. This is painting the picture of violence coming from Donald Trump in conjunction with Nancy Pelosi and uh, uh, condemning racist remarks by Trump. But th there is none. There is none. This is getting their base so fired up and so lit up. Uh, and if you think this is bad, wait till you hear what the four horsemen or the squad, whatever you want to, they're calling themselves nowadays. Uh, listen to what they're actually saying. This at Lydia Lynn 89, our good friend and absolute great patriot to follow. Attention, brown, black, Muslim, and queer faces. Representative Ayanna Presley, the fourth of the horsemen, says your voice matters only if you fit into the peg hole that she has carved out for you and speak only what she dictates. And I'll just say that I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired and weary about the full freedoms, health, and safety of black and brown children and families being compromised, negotiated, and moderated. And, and that's why I'm here, to focus on the work with a capital W. You are not prepared to come to that table and to represent that voice, don't come. Because we don't need any more brown faces that don't want to be a brown voice. We don't need black faces that don't want to be a black voice. We don't need Muslims that don't want to be a Muslim voice. We don't need queers that don't want to be a queer voice. And if you're worried about being marginalized and stereotyped, please don't even show up. Because we need you to represent that voice. I also would like to just underscore the fact that despite the occupant of the White House attempts, to marginalize us and to silence us, please know that we are more than four people. We ran on a mandate to advocate for and to represent those ignored, left out, and left behind. Our squad is big. Our squad includes any person committed to building a more equitable and just world. And that is the work that we want to get back to. And given the size of this squad, and this great nation, we cannot, we will not be silenced. You heard it right from the horse's mouth. The squad, 
uh, trying to give power back to the people. No, this is a power grab by you all. And, and just to remind you, you're in Congress. You're one of 435. Uh, what you think you're trying to do is, is beyond me. You're in one single district in Massachusetts. Uh, these inflated egos and these, these uh, blown up heads thinking that they have the power to do something to, uh, to, to take away from, they say they want to, they say they want to take away, uh, uh, power and give it back to the people, but that is, that's never how it happens. It never, ever works that way. Uh, and if you really truly want to be a champion for the people, then quit race baiting. Quit, quit being such a racist and a hateful uh, xenophobe. Quit, quit hating on Americans. Quit hating on white people. Quit hating on black people, as you say. Uh, quit hating on Muslims, as you say. This is where the hate is, and this is the divisiveness. And when people say Donald Trump divided America, no, this is the division. If you guys get with Donald Trump and work out deals, Donald Trump's a deal maker. You work out a deal, you'll make it better for America. But that's not what you want. That's not what your party is about. Your party is about dividing everybody up into different genders and into races, into different sects from different countries. And you want to divide all of America and conquer. And this is the gaslighting that I am talking about. Uh, this at Mel underscore Faith One, great one to follow. At St. Clair Ashley, talking to protesters outside the Aurora Ice Facility. Oh my goodness, these people are really so clueless. I don't give a f- I don't give a f- Back up, back up, back up. Savannah. Get flagging the troops so the reason you're able to out here. You're a f- like You're a fucking stupid ass, privileged ass. Get the out of here now! You're a cobra shell. F*** the troops. You I'm here at the Aurora Ice Facility where protesters decided to take down the American flag and put a Mexican flag in its place. I'm appalled that politicians like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez have promoted this behavior and disrespected our country, our flag, and our law enforcement. I'm here to show support for our law enforcement and our country and everything that our flag stands for. God bless America and God bless our law enforcement. That's full-blown gaslit right there. This young girl having no clue as to what has been done to her. Guys, this is the new news media you've got to get with absolutely at St. Clair, uh, Ashley, and, and again right here at New Right Network's original series, Smith TV, Crush the Share, Crush the Follow, showing you the real news of what's really going on, making sense of it, explaining to you why is this young girl done lost her mind. It's because the Democrat Party has literally, with these new... uh, uh these new elected officials, the four horsemen or the uh, mob squad, mob squad. That's who they are. We're going to call them the mob squad. The mob squad literally lying and gaslighting and tricking and mentally abusing their voters into thinking that something is really isn't. And at real Donald Trump, the Democrat congresswoman have been spewing some of the most vile, hateful, disgusting things ever said by a politician in the House or Senate, and they yet get a free pass and a big embrace from the Democrat Party. Horrible, anti-Israel, anti-USA, pro-terrorist and public, shouting the F word among many other terrible things, and the petrified Dems run for the hills. Why isn't the House voting to rebuke the filthy and hate-laced things that they have said because they are the radical left and the Democrats are afraid to take them on? And Representative Steve Smith tweets out to, to Donald Trump, It's pathetic, sir. Rolling Stones, Women Against America, and Democrats, proud party of open borders embracing MS-13. Thank you, Stephen Smith. Appreciate that, Representative, for having our presidents back. We need to support these candidates that are supporting America first, our president who is doing everything possible to continue to make America great, uh, and then keeping America great. And it is up to us right here, you and I, after 2020, after 2024, it is all on our shoulders to continue the march of keeping America great. Donald Trump doing everything he possibly can. Now it's up to us to do everything we can. 
So folks, jump over to smith.tv, uh, become a Patreon. You'll get the show notes early. You'll get the show early. You can be, have the inside ball game to everything going on with New Right Network's original series, Smith TV. Uh, help the real news media to get out there to expose the fake news, the propaganda. So Kurt, a New York Times bestselling author, Trump's lie that Ilhan Omar loves Al-Qaeda, just more evidence of his racism. Well, that's not a racist statement, but uh, okay, whatever, Kurt. Uh, our friend at Nomer, a CY604, is that all you got? You fools are the biggest pack of losers ever. Can't be happy. Can't accept that Trump is the best president ever. Just showing the world how stupid you fools really are. Hashtag Trump 2020 landslide victory. Yes, that's all they've got. Uh, and we can shoot this down. We can prove this in real time right here, guys. Uh, Ilhan Omar, there are things coming out about her that uh, should should land her in jail, should land her in jail, and at the very least kick her out of Congress. And this at Just Say Truth Now, Linda Evans, our good friend, a definite must follow. Ilhan Omar loves nothing more than to divide our country based on race, religion, gender, orientation, ability, or immigration status. This is the only way she thinks she can prevent the solidarity of working people. We're not falling for it. Fix it. This is a president who has openly violated the very value our country aspires to uphold. Equality under the law, religious liberty, equal protection, and protection from persecution. And to distract from that, he's launching a blatantly racist attack on four duly elected members of the United States of House of Representatives, all of whom are women of color. This is the agenda of white nationalists, whether it is happening in chat rooms or it's happening on national TV, and now it's reached the White House garden. He would love nothing more than to divide our country based on race, religion, gender, orientation, or immigration status. Because this is the only way he knows he can prevent the solidarity of us working together across all of our differences. The only way to prevent us confronting the problems our country is facing, whether it is health care, climate change, student debt, or our endless wars. Endless wars? That's what Donald Trump's trying to get us out of. Student debt, uh, you're responsible for your own money, and this is a power grab attempting to trick students who've got a lot of debt into voting for you. Uh, this is the race baiting. This is division of this country. This is the new leftist Democrat party. This is what the whole party has become. Racist, bigot, sexist, homophobe, trying to paint America as white nationalists. If you don't like the country, get out. Bye, Felicia. You know, yeah, he's in command here. Yeah. Al-Qaeda, you know, has been... He's an expert. <laughs> And, you know, yeah, he's in command here. Al Qaeda, you know, has been an expert. <laughs> and this desert man at DGL Wade, Ilhan Omar, her father and brother, all lied to gain entry into the U.S., disqualifying them for citizenship. Report Ilhan Omar's father. Other Somalis, war crimes perpetrators now living illegally in the U.S., this reported by Gateway Pundit. And this, our good friend at Julie Rinkwin won. This is absolutely great patriot to follow. All Laura Loomer news. She's connected with Laura. If you want to find out breaking Laura Loomer news, definitely follow this one. She tweets out, White House petition demands investigation into Ilan Omar's illegal citizenship status. Laura Loomer official. The article goes over to lauralumer.us. And there's the link right there in the description on uh, show notes, as well as her article. I've signed the petition. I highly suggest you sign the petition as well. And this tweeted out by Donald J. Trump. We will never forget. This is Ilhan Omar speaking at the terrorist organization CARE. CARE was founded after 9-11. 
because they recognize that some people did something. So you have no idea right, right oh, now? Oh, there's another one. Another plane just hit. <gasps> some people did something? Oh my goodness, there is smoke pouring out of the Pentagon. Some people did something? It just flew straight into it. At Gracie5111, a Muslim activist is a consultant to the Ohio Democrat Party. Let that sink in. This by the OhioStar.com. We've got to put this on display. We've got to continue to keep talking about this and showing who these people are, the mob squad, who these people are, where they come from, their background. I, I mean, you know, when somebody runs for office, you would think that the media would do some investigation as into who these people are. They don't care. Right here at Smith TV, we absolutely care. Care about the country, care about the direction. We care about Americans and wanting to keep Americans safe. And this at Stand With Us, Israel advocacy breaks bombshell story on the closest friends of Rashida Tlaib. Now, this isn't new. This isn't breaking new, but they just put this up. And I just want to play just a couple of seconds of this for you. Uh, it's a full nine minutes. You can jump down in the description below, but we'll just play just uh, about 30 seconds of it. Is Rashida Tlaib a terrorist supporter? Well, there's plenty of folk on Twitter who think she is. But random blokes on Twitter don't really count as proof. And as she's careful with what she says, We're going to go in there. We're going to impeach the mother... At least most of the time. We decided to investigate the people behind her election success. Now, we haven't got time to show you everything they've said. So let's begin with this Facebook status. Here, Rashida thanks five of her friends who helped her get her elected. We found four of them on social media, and every single one of them had made posts that will shock the American public. Let's begin in order. First up is Ahlam Jabara. Alam is a close friend and political ally of Rashida. Here she is posing with her other friend, Razmia Oda. Now you may be wondering, who's Razmia? Razmia is a terrorist. She was jailed for 10 years for murdering two Israelis in a supermarket bombing. As you dig deeper into Rashida Tlaib, it gets really bad. Yes, folks, she is tied to so many different terrorists in the background. Ilhan Omar now tied to Turkey's uh, Erdogan. Uh, people in Turkey wanting to support and send money to, it's illegal, but, you know, Democrats get away with whatever they want to do. I just get away with it. But we've absolutely got to stop Stop this. Uh, they got to be elected out. That's the only way that this is really going to happen. Elect them out and make our country safe again by securing the border, by stopping Islam and the ideologies of Islam. And this, our good friend at Eddie is back, KAG 2020. I'm dedicating the whole month of July on Twitter for the remembrance of Kate Steinle. We as a sovereign nation must never let her memory die in vain. Absolutely, truly uh, a very sad story, and it never needed to happen. Uh, police officers being killed, people being run over, drunk drivers, angel moms and angel dads, just over and over again. The stories are horrendous. All they need to do is deport the illegals, uh, get rid of them. They shouldn't be in the country to begin with. And this at Trump's always, Washington's ICE Detention Center attacker, Wilhelm van Sparen wrote, I am Antifa manifesto before the assault, a terrorist attack by an Antifa terrorist. This at Echo the Call, our good friend. Watch the montage of media supporting Antifa. But where is CNN, MSNBC, ABC, CBS, NBC coverage on the story of Antifa terrorists attacking the ICE facility? All punches are not equal morally. In the eyes of the law, yes. But in the eyes of good and evil, here's the argument. 
They are strictly principled anti-fascists. And what they see in the Trump administration and what they see happening in this country, they see, they see the neo-fascism that we see. And they've taken a principled stand to stand against white supremacists and white nationalists wherever they may show up. It says it right in the name, Antifa, anti-fascism, which is what they were there um, fighting. Listen, there's... You know, no organization is perfect. There was some violence. I think that a lot of people recognize that when pushed, self-defense is a legitimate response to white supremacy and neo-Nazi violence. The problem is to equate the violence in reaction against bigotry with the bigotry itself is to misunderstand the fact that when you go to cancer treatment, the radiation is tough treatment, but it is meant to remove the cancer. There's a group of anti-fascists called the Black Bloc, which do tend to get violent. Their idea is, look, non-violent hasn't worked and we are going to try to stop this but they wouldn't have been there they wouldn't have been anywhere near there had it not been for the fact that white supremacists neo-nazis were out scaring the living daylouts out of most of the people in that town thuggishness is thuggishness wherever it comes from politically and and we should be the first to call it out i disagree (laughs) and this our good friend at mel underscore faith one why won't the squad condemn antifa the horrible attacks. Who wouldn't condemn that no matter what their stance? This is two videos back uh, uh, playing simultaneously of uh, the elected officials being asked to rebuke Antifa. Will you, will you be condemning Antifa? I mean, can they firebombed an American facility. Will you condemn them? You must be happy that they did it. Excuse us, we have to get to the city. Are you pleased? Will you be condemning them? Should more people do it? Do you feel like you have some it's easy to say no in the attack with your rhetoric about concentration camps? Are you responsible? Do you feel ashamed? Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, right there refusing to denounce Antifa, anti-fascist, uh, Don Lemon. Anti-fascists are actually the fascist. When you silence people because they have a different point of view, You are the fascist. You are the ones shouting us down. You are the ones that are violently attacking us. Uh, You heard Ayanna Presley go full board racism. If you don't think like us, you don't do like us, you are not like us, get out, you're bad. That's the Democrat Party that's been hijacked. Now to round this all out, we'll go into lightning round, guys. We'll wrap this up with some really good news I saw I had to give that to you, but we've got to expose these fascists in our government, Islam in our government, and we've got to root this out, showing you the gaslighting and showing you their supporters that have truly been tricked and propagandized into thinking something that is that really isn't. This at USCG underscore proud, the hard truth episode one, media bias, hashtag walk away educational series. Our good friend Brandon at U.S. Minority. They lied to you about Donald Trump. They lied about Brett Kavanaugh. They lied about children in cages. Hell, they even lied about Walkaway. They were wrong about the election outcome. They were wrong about the Covington kids. They were wrong about Jussie Smollett. And yes, oh yes, they were wrong about Russian collusion. I am excited about this series, and I'm very, very excited for Brandon doing some phenomenal work, great stuff, absolutely love it, good friend of the show, good friend in general, Uh, definitely want to follow, stay abreast on all the information at U.S. Minority. And this at KNP2BP, where is the lighting? How long can the at Reverend Al blatantly ignore his long documented history with real Donald Trump? As you see right there, Reverend Al, or... This tweet by Larry Elder, the president's a racist. That's it. No doubt in my mind, he's been demonstrated time and time again. This by Reverend Sharpton recently. But but his past is different. Shaking hands with Donald Trump. And then you got Jesse Jackson, a whole black caucus right there. Have you ever been so racist you receive an award from Jesse Jackson for hiring so many minorities? Why doesn't the media remember this? Trump being given Ellis Island Award for contributing to the conditions of inner city black youths standing alongside Muhammad Ali and Rosa Parks. This at M-A-Z-U-R-I-K-L. I have one question. Who owns you? Schumer, Sanders, Feinstein, Clinton, Obama, Pelosi. 
All of the rest of you who supported open borders, socialist policies, we are a sovereign constitutional republic now and forever. And the video highlights all of them contradicting each other from years past. And this at jelly underscore cat. And here comes the lion BS artist at the Democrat coalition and the Democrats. He tweeted out Epstein, anyone who helped him at any point needs to be helped, held accountable for this. It's absolutely disgusting. Anyone serving in public office linked to Epstein needs to resign immediately, especially Donald Trump, who knew all about this. Watch this, man. Does President Trump, the leader of the greatest nation on earth, truly act like a racist? Hanging out with all the new media, hanging out with good friends of ours, black, white. It just doesn't matter, guys. And this at Megavolt001. Trump signs order to make American-made goods more American. This at foxnews.com. And guys, it is just all out there. The, the, the Democrats are coming at every single angle. Yes, I honestly believe that, uh, that, that, uh, Bill Clinton should be locked up. Yeah. Uh, Donald Trump, one time. No, come on. We're talking about Bill Clinton, 26, 27 times flights. Uh, Donald Trump banning Epstein from Mar a Largo. More law- lies, more fake news from the, the Democrat propaganda machine and the uh, lying news outlet. All in full display right here for you guys. And this is New Right Network's original series, Smith TV. Your host, Brian Smith, giving you all the breaking news of the day, wrapping it all up, making sense of it, exposing the fake news. The propaganda, the Democrats, the the mainstream media giving you the real news, things that you're never going to hear anywhere because they want it buried. Guys, this is the real news right here. Crush the like, crush the share. Uh, Go down in the description below. Click the link for show notes. You can share that with your friends and your family. The show is embedded in the notes as well as all the links to all the great patriots to help make this show possible. Thank every single one of you. And again, the new news media, we got Brandon out there still doing great work. Uh, Coming up here in Columbus weekend, we got the American Priority Conference coming up. It is going to be a blast. Uh, Breaking Sarah Huckabee Sanders to speak at American Priorities uh, Conference. That is going to be a lot of fun. If you haven't got your tickets, you absolutely need to. Jump over to smith.tv. Down down at the bottom of the website, there's a link right there for American Priorities. Or just go over to AmericanPriority.com. Get your tickets. Make sure that you got them and got them early. This is going to be down at Trump Doral uh, down in Florida. It is going to be uh, the who's who of who's who. Like like everybody's going to be there. Uh, Possibly Don Jr. might be there. Uh, I'd like to think Donald Trump would swing by, but who knows? You never know, guys, at these conferences where we all get together. Uh, you get to rub elbows with your friends and your family, and just people that you've seen before, uh, people you haven't seen in a while, and it's just an incredible event. No hate, no anger, guys. A lot of fun and a lot of hanging out, a lot of uh, like-minded people just coming together for an incredible conference. And again, you've got to be there. So, for, for Smith TV, Brian Smith, guys, for Tuesday Thoughts, whew, I'm done. You've been listening to New Right Network, mobilizing, countering, energizing. Online at newrightnetwork.com.